Hey guys, welcome back to some more Magic the Gathering. Um, I am going to show you a bit of a weird deck. Uh, before I get started, and if you guys don't want to see me go through my deck list, uh, just like always, there's chapters down below that you can check out if you want to skip through. Anyways, uh, so it's a Mutate deck, which was a mechanic that was only in one set. I believe it got supplemented in a couple other sets, but... That was only like two or three cards, but I really enjoyed it, so I thought I'd make a deck, and so I'll show it to you guys. First thing first, we've got, for, for the first time ever, in a blue deck, I don't have a, what's his, what's his name? Oh, damn it. Opt. How could I forget it? The godly figure of Opt. The great, the one, the only Opt. So we've got Mysterious Egg. Whenever this creature mutates, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Uh, in essence, mutate is you can pay an amount of mana... You put it on top of another creature, and then uh, the creature on top, you use its uh, attack and de attack and defense, right? And it has all of the abilities of every single uh, creature underneath. You'll see more while, uh, while we go on, but if you use Mysterious Egg and you mu mutate it like three times, you automatically get three plus one plus ones. It's a, it's a great card, uh, at least for this deck. Polywog Symbiote for one and a blue. Each creature you cast costs one less. Each creature spell you cast costs one less to cast if it has mutate. That's such a weird line of text. Each creature, each creature spell you cast costs one less to cast if it has mutate. That feels. I, I might be crazy, but that feels incredibly redundant. Whenever you cast a creature spell if that is mutate, draw a card, then discard a card. Very simple. Um, you it cheapens mutate and it lets you rummage every single time you mutate. We've got Essence Symbiote. Whenever a creature you control mutates, put a plus one, plus one counter on that creature, and you gain two life. Similar to Mysterious Egg, except for it doesn't... Except for it doesn't, uh... Similar to Mysterious Egg, except for it doesn't do it on itself. So it puts a plus one, plus one counter on that creature, and you gain two life, which is very good, because you do... Mysterious Egg is good, but this is any time you mutate at all, so it can be incredibly powerful. Ram through for two. Target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. If that creature, if creature, if the creature you control is trample, the excess damage is dealt to the creatures of controllers instead. So very simple. It fights target creature, except for it doesn't take any damage. So for instance, if I have a six-six Elder Gargaroth and they have a six-six Auspicious Star Tricks, I can use Ram through on my Gargaroth. Kill the Auspicious Star Tricks, and my Gargaroth won't die. Uh, next, we've got Merrileaf Pixie for a, a blue and a red, a blue and a green. It's got flying. It's a two-two, and it's got add uh, green or blue. Very, very good because it lets you get the mana that you need. It's also a two-two flyer, which can be good because sometimes you just need the extra two damage if you're swinging in. Sea Dash or Octopus. For two blue and a white, uh, mutate for one and a blue. Flash, which means you can play it as if it were an instant. And whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. So if it if it's if it's connected to a, to another big creature, that means every single time you hit it, hit an opponent, you always draw a card. And even if it's not, it's just a great source of card draw. Uh, Glowstone Recluse. Uh, it's for two and a green, and it mutates for three and a green. It's got reach. Whenever this creature, whenever this creature mutates, put a, put two plus one plus one counters on it, which is godlike. Because if it, let's say you've got a C dash or octopus, you put a glowstone recluse on it, it's automatically a four five with a uh, reach. And if you put maybe trumpeting gar on it or any other creature, like base blind, if you mutate it once, it gets two plus one plus ones, which is amazing. And on top of that, if you mutated it more than once, if you, even if only you only mutated it twice, it gets four plus one plus one counters, which is just so much value. Trumpeting Gar, it's one a uh, green and a blue, but you can mutate it for three colorless and uh, two of either green or blue. Whenever this creature mutates, create a three three beast creature token, which is great because if you mutate it a lot, you get you can get like three or four beast tokens from that. It also makes you a lot more difficult because usually with mutate decks, a big problem is you have one big creature, but if they swing with a bunch of stuff, you can't really do much. 
But if you've got a beast, you can take them out. Uh, you can protect yourself. You can swing out with your big creature, and you can protect yourself with your beasts. And even if you don't, it can protect you if they've got Death Touch or something like that. You know what I mean? All right. We've got Gem Razor for four, or Mutate for one and a green and a green. It's got Reach and Trample, which is good because um, even if you don't care about its second ability, you just give your creature Reach and Trample. Plus, it's got plus it's got a base power of four four, which is great if 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 you got a bunch of plus one plus one counters on it because you know uh, it. It deal. It's you know. It keeps its base power. Uh, whenever this creature mutates, destroy target artifact or enchantment an opponent controls. Very simple. Uh, so you can blow up your opponent's stuff if they're doing any shenanigans. Uh, migratory great horn for three and a green, or mutate for two and a green. Whenever this creature mutates, search your library for basic land card, put it onto the battlefield, tap, then shuffle. Neat. Uh, it's uh, it's good for. It's good for uh for gaining land. It's not amazing, but it's pretty good. It's good. Uh, we've got Dreamtail Heron for five or uh four colorless and a blue. It mutates for three colorless and a blue. It's got flying, which is amazing because if you've got any other powerful things, they automatically can fly over most of the things. And whenever this creature mutates, draw a card. Great sort of great great source of card draw. I don't know why, but I'm super tongue tied to get. To, ugh, today, I think it's just because I'm talking very fast. Uh, auspicious Starix, mutate for five and a green. Whenever this creature mutates, exile target card from the top of your library until you exile X permanent cards, where X is the number of times this creature is mutated. Put those permanent cards onto the battlefield. Very simply, if you've mutated three or four times, it doesn't count lands and instruments and spells and stuff. So if you send this out, you can get out like. Like, the worst you could possibly get would be, like, three Polywogs, or, like, three Essence uh, Symbiotes, or, like, three, uh, oh, three, like, uh, three Mysterious Eggs, three Polywog. The only time that I can think that this wouldn't be incredibly super beneficial is if you put out three Mysterious Eggs, and even then you've got three creatures to protect yourself with. Uh, we've also got Elder Gargroth, which is so powerful. For three colorless and two green. Uh, it's got Vigilus, Reach, and Trample. Which is a great thing to mutate off of. And even if you don't. It's got whenever Elder Gargaroth attacks or blocks. Choose one. Create a 3-3 three, three green beast token creature. You gain three life. Or draw a card. So good because it's incredibly situational. If they're attacking you with a bunch of creatures. You can create a beast. If you're low on life you gain life. Or if you just need car If you've got everything you need and you really need card draw. You can just draw a card. Uh. Epic proportions for four colorless and two green. Flash enchant creature. Creature gets plus five, plus five, and trample. Which, if you put it on something that's powerful, can just buff it up so quickly. It all it also gets trample, and it's got flash. You can play it at any time that you need it. It's ah amazing. All right, see you guys when the match starts. Peace. Hey guys, so we're going to be playing Taboo. Oh, this looks like a good hand. I will warn you, while I was talking shit while we were showing off this deck, it is limited to one set, and so there's not a great variety of creatures, and I think I've made the one of the, possibly the best deck that you can make with this. Not entirely sure, but be warned, it may not be mind-breakingly good, but it is always super, super fun. Mmm, life gain, that's scary. Alright, uh, let's go snow-covered land, then we'll go mysterious egg. Uh, let's hope we, we draw something that can mutate for two, or something that just costs two. Because I would not like... Mmm. No blocks. Alright. I think we're going to have to go for the Evolving Wild since we don't really have anything to play other than Mysterious Egg. And Unsummon isn't really worth it at this time. So, let's go for a Forest. Um, and then play a second Mysterious Egg that can protect us. I think next turn we go... Oh, we can't even mutate Trumpeting Gnar. 
I think we're just gonna play Trumpeting Gnar on it. Unless we draw something that we can mutate. Oh, we can mutate. Okay, if we draw a force, we can mutate Gem Racer. Otherwise, I think we're just gonna play Trumpeting Gnar on its own. And then just hope for the best. You know what I mean? Because I don't think we can afford to wait another turn. Wait. No, that's four to mutate. All right, yeah. We have to go trumpeting Gnar because we don't have enough mana. Sad. I really wanted to go for, to drop up, drop it on the mysterious egg, but uh, we can now we can protect ourselves from both the Charm Strays and the Vulcan Arcanist. Uh, so, and we've got the Unsummon in case they play anything scary like a uh, oof, like in Johnny's Pride Mate. So I think we should be set up pretty nice. It does depend on what they play though, because this seems like a scary deck. Not not for any particular reason, just because a lot of decks you find fall into an archetype. And I think the scariest decks are definitely the ones where you have no clue what the hell is going on. Ooh. This is annoying. I wish I had drawn a actual land. But it's not the end of the world. We can play something next turn. We can hold up the unsummon. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think next turn we either go Dreamtail Heron or Gem Razor, depending on what they play. If they play an artifact, I think we're going to have to go... Yeah, I think we're going to have to go Gem Razor. Just because it will also leave us up mana for unsummon. Alright. Okay. So, we can play Snow Covered Island. Yeah, and actually, no, we're playing Austere. I didn't even realize we had that much. No, I meant to mutate it! Oh, damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. Well, I mean, we've got a 6-6 six, six in play, so... It's not exactly bad, but damn it, I don't like that. Ugh. I think what we're gonna have to do is, since Luminous Blood Moth is flying, we're gonna have to go Dreamtail Heron on Auspicious Sterix, and then wait. This costs four. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to. Go for it. Actually, no. I think Essence Symbiote. Um, what does this have? It doesn't have... Okay, yeah, so I think Gem Razor... Oh my god, I used... I can't do anything? Ugh. I'm just... I don't know what's going on. I'm just playing my absolute worst today. Jeez Louise. Usually I'm popping off, but like, I am playing garbage, and I, like, I'm getting good luck, I'm just squandering it, because I'm just not paying enough attention. Okay. On summons an instant, so, let's see what they play. Hmm. Okay, pass. I think we're gonna have to. I don't like this because if they've got it, wait, do they have any pump spells that they can use immediately? No, I don't know of any pump spells that only cost one mana. So they're just an idiot, I guess. Okay, wait, wait. We, let's unsummon the luminous moth before the triggers activate. Will that work? Oh no, well. Damn it. Mm. Okay. Let's go mutate this on to Auspicious Sterix. Oof. I don't like that I had to do that. But it's a 7 7 with flying now and trumpeting Gnar. So we play that. I think for now we just have to hold back. That is 
the midnight clock is ticking up, but, um, that's scary. I don't think that can take us out this turn, though. And we can get Gem Racer and or Migratory Great Great Thorn Great Horn out. Yeah, I think we can do both. Yeah, we can do both. So whenever this creature mutates, search your land for a burst, for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield, tap the trophy the library. I think we're gonna have to do mm, no, we're going to do Gem Razor on top of Auspicious, uh, I mean underneath Auspicious Derricks. Okay. Alright, we've got Cita. Okay. We're doing okay. Mm. Now, Migratory Great Horn, we're going to have to mutate on top of, I think Auspicious Derricks, just because... At this point, it's not worth going out. Like, look at this. We have to scroll down. All right, give me one second. Um, I think we're gonna have to go for snow-covered land. We have to scroll down to see all my oh, to see all the text. That's how good this card is. All right, we and we haven't even played our land for turn. Crack evolving wilds. Uh, play snow-covered island. Now we can swing with. Mm. Auspicious stare at both trumpeting Gnars. Yeah, I think we're going to have to do that just because they won't be able to do anything uh, if we leave them back. Just because... But we do have Merrileaf Pixie, which is good, which means that if they've got something really dangerous, we have at least one thing that can deal with it. Mm-hmm. That's scary, but if we can trump, if we can uh, do something off, on top of him, if we can uh, mutate underneath him, then we can use his ability to destroy their artifact. I don't like that it gives it vi that, that it gives them vigilance, but I think we're just gonna have to sacrifice Merrily Pixie because we got enough land. All right, this gains me one life. So that's okay. We play. Yeah, we should have still have enough mana. Okay, we mutate this underneath him. Under. Now he gains. We gain four life. He gets two plus one. Okay, this is what I'm talking about. It really, really stacks up quickly. Okay. Oh my God! Look at my battlefield. Okay, let's swing with this. He gave up. I mean, who would do? Who? Who knows why? Who? Blah, 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 blah. Sorry, I know I'm being a bit of a bitch from winning, but like, I thought this was. I thought this deck was gonna be okay. It might not been have been amazing, but it is. Maybe that was just a fluke, but that kicked some ass. And I was like, I was. I don't know. I don't know what. I was just. That entire game, my mind was just not there. I was just not really put uh, putting too much energy into it, and I, I don't know why. But like, we still crushed, like obliterated, my man. All right, Balthazar Black. Let's see what you got, boys. Ooh, this is good. This is nice. Okay. I think we go snow-covered land, then we go polywog symbiote. Okay, what do we do next turn? Because we get polywog symbiote. If we play polywog symbiote, we can play glowstone recluse the next turn, I believe. Because it'll be... Oh, okay, yeah, you know what, you know what, you know what? I think it's not worth it. Uh, I don't know, I'm torn. Because if we get the two essence symbiotes out, we will just be stacking it up. <laughs> yeah, I think, even though I'd prefer to do that, I think we're just going to stick with the essence symbiote. Because it's just, 
there's just so much value to be had by leaving it like this. Ugh, it does pay me though, but the second we play that Glowstone Recluse. Oh, damn, we don't have mana. We're gonna have to wait till next turn. I don't like doing this, but I know the second that I play this Glowstone Recluse, we're Gucci. We're gonna be popping off. It is scary though, right? But if we can draw another land, I believe we'll, we're going to be able to get Epic Proportions pretty soon. Oh, Daxos, Blessed by the Sun. You're so cool. Wow. Oh, no. Heliod Suncrown is actually very scary. I don't like that. What the hell? How does he... Oh, damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. Okay. Well, we mutate on top of Mysterious Egg and draw a card. Let's get rid of Snowcrow Mountain. Submit. Um, over. Now, I wonder how big this is going to get. So it's a 7 8. That's actually real good. All we have to do is wait till next turn. He's got Reach, so that, that is good. Next turn, we get Trample. So, I don't know. Let's just hope we run, we grab something else that can mutate. Because if we don't pick up anything else that can mutate, we might be in a dire situation. But. Mm, 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 mm. If we just got one of the, uh, what's, what are the, what the, how am I forgetting the name? Well, the, the thrasher guys who destroy artifacts, we, we would be, we would be pretty good because we take out the altar of the pantheon. He, does he have indestructible? No, he can't do anything, can he? All right, yeah, he can't. Oh, he's got, I did not know he had seven, uh, he had eight defense. That's annoying, but. I think we're gonna have to go Glowstone Recluse. Um, yeah, because that'll give us a ch Oh, no, no, no! Damn it! Okay, thank God. Because I was thinking, uh... Okay, we go. <laughs> Which one we should have over? Alright. So... I believe next turn we might win the game as long as we draw something that... Oh. Yeah, we have enough life to attack. And they should try and defend. Oh, he's got indestructible. I forgot that we don't have... Damn it, I forgot that we don't have trample yet. So I was acting like we did have trample. Then I was saying next turn we get trample. I don't know why. My mind is just not in it today. Jesus. And indestructible can be so annoying. Because he neg he's at negative nine health and he doesn't die. It's just... Ugh. Mmm. But, next turn he'll be a 1920. So he's gonna have to block. Otherwise he dies. So, hmm. Well, not he doesn't, have, he doesn't die, but like, he basically has to block. Okay. Oh, this all depends on what he sends out here. Ugh, as long as I, I just hope I get something that mutates and that also gives trample. Because if I get something that mutates and also gives trample, mm, I think we're going to have to go epic proportions. Although I would prefer to go the other way first and get C dash where we don't have the mana for it. So I think we're going to have to go epic proportions first. Um, yeah, epic proportions first. Why is he gaining so... Oh, he's gaining so much life so he can... Uh, so he can take damage. He can... T but at least... Okay, so I think I see what he's trying to do. He doesn't actually care about the mana because he's got nothing in hand. But... He's trying to buff Daxos. And then that way... Okay, so how much can he block with? So he can... If he blocks, he deals... 14... 16... Yeah, he shouldn't be able to... Uh, he's just trying to not die... 
which is good because I thought he was going to try and buff it out so that I could die. But at least as far as I see, there's nothing he can do that would... Okay, he's down to 27 life. This is good. Next turn we play C dash octopus. We hope for something else that mutates well, because if we do, he get he'll gain um, six uh, plus one plus one counters uh, from this, and whenever we deal damage, he'll draw a card. Oh, the thing is, we, I don't know if we can survive another attack. This is scary. He just I don't like this. If we get something with flying, we might be able to take him out this turn. Damn it. Oh. Mm. I don't like this. I don't like this. Don't like this. Don't like this. Don't like this. We're going to have to take out Daxos. Blessed by the sun. Mmm. The problem is, this deck is... I don't know why, but whenever I make videos, I face decks that are just really horrible decks, but for some reason against my awful, awful jank, they just do, they're like perfectly tailored to do this, because this is like way too slow to do anything, but it's like he just happens to be doing like the perfect amount. Okay, ugh, don't like that, mutated over a glowstone recluse. Oh, mm. all right. Oh, it depends on what we draw. Because if we draw something good, we might be able to get get past this. Okay, we mutate onto Glowstone Recluse. Over top, this could be good. Okay. All right. We play this. We fought a 34, 35 with Trample. We just can't do anything. Ugh. Mm. I don't like this. And I don't want to forfeit either. Ugh. This is this is tough. This is tough. Depends on what they have in their hand, though. Oh my god. It's so annoying because if I just if I can get anything that if I can get anything that can take out these these artifacts, we might be able to do something, but it's just, I can't when he's getting three plus one plus one counters on multiple creatures every single turn. I think he's, he might kill us this turn, which honestly would be a blessing, just because this, this guy is playing a big old weenie game. All right. Okay. I think the good thing is he might he might kill us with Heliod the Sun Crowned. Thing is he I don't know if he can I don't know if he has enough to kill us this turn. Because if he swings in with everything and then we're able to survive. Damn it. I think we should have just let him win just because there's I don't think unless we get something I don't know how we would take out as long as we can take out Helio the Sun Crown we well I guess GG for him Ugh, that stinks this stinks and we were doing so well because it was such an amazing oh wait wait we might actually have a chance oh wait no we're gonna die anyways but the very least I can take out that one of those stupid Artheon Altar of the Parthenon. Alright. Play that. We've got a 40-40 with Reach and Trample, but we can't deal with one stupid... Oh. Alright. Well, good game. Good game. Good game, good game, good game. Ugh. That's so annoying. That Heliod really messed me up. Mm. And the thing is, if we had just gotten that, uh, whatever that, what do you call it? The gem raiser earlier. Like, look, he only, you need, uh, five devotion. 
These two combined only have three devotion. The only reason he was able to do anything is because he had these two altar of the pan uh, pantheon out. Like, oh my god, it's because they give you an extra devotion for each color. But with Heliod, you just it like you need the devotion. And if we just gotten that like a couple turns earlier, we could have destroyed both of the altar of the Parthenons, and then. We would have he would have either had to die or almost die or take a take a beating every single turn and he uh, and like take one take a uh, let me take out one of his creatures at least once a turn and then I could probably could have won but it was just I did not draw that gem razor for so many freaking turns. All right, I know we've only done two episode uh, two videos, but I mean two battles, but uh, we're we're kind of out of time. It's getting a bit late. Also, being a bit uh. I don't know why, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I've been playing pretty trash tonight, and I don't want to, you know, I want to keep my energy up and, you know, do well for next time. So, peace. See ya. Also, if you want to hit the like button, hit the like button. If you want to subscribe, subscribe. Stuff like the regular stuff. Peace. Peace.